Hi everyone. Today we're going to be learning about charged bodies. That is, bodies, objects, that have an electric charge on them. Right? So in particular we're going to be talking about how we produce this electric charge by adding or losing electrons. Now, most matter uh, will contain exactly the same amount, or roughly the same amount, of protons and electrons. Right? Both protons and electrons are found in atoms. So what this means is that we have a neutral electric charge, or an electric charge of zero. The electric charge of all the protons cancels out the electric charge of all the electrons. But when an object contains unequal numbers of protons and electrons, uh, the object will become charged, right? and it may be positively charged or negatively charged uh, based on whether we're gaining electrons or losing electrons. So objects with opposite charges, so a positive charge and a negative charge, will attract each other. On the other hand, if we have two of the same charge, like a positive charge near a positive charge, or a negative charge near a negative charge, the two objects will repel each other. Right? If you bring them close to each other, each one will experience a force away from the other. So what this means is that it takes work to separate, uh, uh, to separate opposite charges from each other, or to move like charges closer together. Work just means that we expend energy in order to complete the process. So if we have two objects with uh, opposite charges, like a proton and an electron, and we want to separate them, then we need to spend energy to do it. Now if we can separate the electrons and the protons in an object, we can intentionally give that object an electric charge, right? Now one object that's able to do this continuously is a battery. A battery uses a chemical reaction in order to separate the electrons and the protons in a set of atoms. Uh, it turns out that we can also use mechanical force in order to separate protons from electrons. And this is the reason it's possible to give yourself a static shock. Uh, let's look at an example. If we take a glass rod and we rub it on a piece of silk, then electrons will be transferred from the rod to the silk. So now the glass rod will have less electrons and the silk will have more electrons. And this means that there'll be an uh, unbalanced number of protons and electrons in each object. The silk gains a negative charge because it has more electrons than protons and the glass rod will have a positive charge because now that it's lost electrons it has more protons than electrons. This was one of the first experiments performed on electricity. And uh, it was experiments like these which led to the uh, development and invention of electric devices. Now it turns out we don't have to use glass and silk. We can do this with a number of different materials. Uh, one of the earliest examples uh, was rubbing amber on fur. We can see a photograph of a piece of amber and a piece of fur over here. And it turns out that amber is where we get the word electricity. Uh, it comes from the Greek word for amber, which is electron. And so this is the reason, this, elect uh, this amber is the reason that we have the word electricity. Now, in the 1700s, this fellow over here, Benjamin Franklin, you might have heard of him, uh, was conducting uh, experiments on electricity. He charged glass rods by rubbing them on silk, right? Now this gives the glass rod a positive charge and the silk a negative charge because electrons move from the glass to the silk. But he noticed that if he charged two glass rods like this, then they would repel each other. And today we know that that's because uh, the two rods have the same charge and so they repel. So he believed 
that there must be some sort of invisible electric fluid going from the glass rod and into the silk, or maybe the other way, from the silk into the glass rod. Back then, it wasn't really possible to tell. Uh, so Franklin was the first one to suggest that there were uh, positive charges and negative charges, right? It was known that you could rub uh, a glass rod on a piece of silk and the glass rod would attract stuff. But it wasn't until Benjamin Franklin that he decided that the glass rod would have a positive charge and the silk would have a negative charge. So uh, he decided at random to call the rod a positive charge and the silk a negative charge. And in fact, this definition of charge has continued to this day. It's the reason that we say that electrons are negative and protons are positive, instead of saying that electrons are positive and the protons are negative. Of course, if Franklin had decided to call the rod negative and the silk positive, then today we'd probably have them the other way around. That is, we would have positively charged electrons and negatively charged protons. Uh, today, of course, we know that positive charge uh, on the glass rod is caused because it is missing electrons. The protons in an object tend not to move. They stay put. It's the electrons that move around. So when we have a positive charge, it's not caused by gaining protons. It's caused by losing electrons because that means that we have more protons that haven't moved than the electrons, because some of the electrons have left. Uh, and conversely, the negative charge on the silk is caused by an excess of electrons. It's gained a whole bunch of electrons so that it has more electrons than the protons it started off with. So this is going to be true of all positive and negative charges. No matter where you find a positive or negative charge, the reason for that charge is because there is either an excess of electrons for a negative charge or a deficiency of electrons for a positive charge. That's the end of the theory. Uh, in this section, we've learned about what causes positive and negative charges and how they were discovered. Let's go on to some questions. Question six. What convention do we use for electric charge when a glass rod is rubbed on a piece of silk? Do we say the glass rod gains a positive charge, a negative charge, a clockwise charge, or an anti-clockwise charge? Now, right away, we can see it's not going to be C and D. Electric charge is a scalar quantity. It's a number. It doesn't point in any direction. So this means that directions don't make sense. We can't say that the charge is clockwise or anti-clockwise. Our options then are a positive charge or a negative charge. Now of these two, uh, Benjamin Franklin was the one who arbitrarily decided which was right. The one that he picked was saying that the glass rod gains a positive charge. Question seven. How do charged objects interact with each other? Do they attract each other uh, if they're oppositely charged? Attract each other if they're similarly charged? Uh, are they, do they attract other things if they're positively charged? Or do they attract things if they're negatively charged? Now, if you ever rub a glass rod on a piece of silk, you'll notice that the glass rod can attract things. So does that mean that the answer is C, positively charged objects attract all other objects? Well, no, it doesn't, because if we bring two of those glass rods together, they repel each other. And that gives us a hint as to what the answer could be. So it can't be D, negatively charged objects will repel other negatively charged objects. It can't be C, because positively charged objects will repel each other. Uh, it can't be B, because if we have similarly charged objects, then they'll repel each other. The last option then is A. Oppositely charged objects attract each other. And so this is the correct answer. Opposites attract and like charges repel. Question eight. Name a pair of materials, other than glass and silk, that can be rubbed together to produce an electric charge. Now there's a whole number of these, so I'm gonna name a few. So, one possible answer is ebonite and wool. You might 
uh, perform this experiment in class. If I recall correctly, the ebonite picks up a negative charge and the wool picks up a positive. So it's the opposite for glass and silk. Another uh, way that we can get a static charge is of course amber and fur. The amber is what electricity is named after. Carpet and rubber soled shoes are the cause of many an accidental electric shock. Dry hair and a plastic comb can sometimes cause crackling or sparking. So these are all ways of uh, producing charges. Any spark that's produced by static electricity is a result of an unbalanced charge between the two objects. Question 9. How does a battery separate positive and negative charges to produce electricity? You don't need to get into too much detail. So in chemistry, uh, you can learn about how a battery works and exactly what the uh, chemical reactions are that will produce a discrepancy between the protons and the electrons of a, sub of a substance. But we don't really cover that in physics, so our answer might look something more like this. A battery separates positive and negative charges with a chemical reaction that occurs inside the battery. We don't need to get any more complex than that unless we're doing chemistry. So the reaction usually involves two different metals as well as a chemical called an electrolyte. Question 10. When a substance gains electrons so that it has an excess of electrons, it becomes negatively charged. Fair enough. How does a substance become positively charged? At first it's tempting to write a similar sort of sentence to the first one. We can say that it must gain an excess number of protons from somewhere else. But this isn't true. Instead, we lose electrons. So a substance becomes positively charged when it loses electrons, so that it has a deficiency of electrons. This means that we'll have more protons than electrons in the substance. Uh, we do not gain positively charged particles. We simply lose negatively charged particles. And if we're losing a negative charge, well, when you subtract a negative, you end up with a positive charge. So that's the end of the questions. In this section, we've learned about the history of electricity, in particular static electricity. And we've looked at what can cause electric charge. Negative electric charges are caused by an excess of electrons, and positive electric charges are caused by a deficiency of electrons.